about some of the findings of um, two reports on the manufacturing that we did in um, 2014. So um, both of these really um, argued for the economic, social and environmental case for remanufacturing, but really stress that in the UK there's a few legislative barriers as well as kind of a lack of um, funding for research and development, um, which we're now seeing in, in Scotland, but could really uh, be expanded throughout uh, England as well. Um, so just to give you a few numbers on remanufacturing, so the estimates at the moment are that remanufacturing is valued at about 2.4 million, um, with really potential to double that, if not more. Um, however, as Colin as well mentioned, um, so many manufacturers are not really um, aware of this issue around remanufacturing, so EF actually did a survey on this, and um, less than, or about 50% of manufacturers have heard um, that we manufacturing or have considered it. So there's a really substantial number of manufacturers that are not really aware of this. And this is exactly where the third party manufacturers come in and, and really fill, fill this gap. And I think for the future we need to really be careful that um, or consider um, policy and legislation for, for both of these actors because both of them play a substantial role in the sector. Um, it's great that uh, both uh, Maxine and Colin have also defined remanufacturing again because that's really one of the key uh, things that we've argued for is that a legal definition for remanufacturing is something that needs to um, be taken forward because it provides consumer confidence, encourages international and national trade and um, really is one of the key barriers that we identified when we spoke to very different uh, remanufacturers throughout the country. Um, of course, remanufacturing is not really a one-size-fits-all concept and we by no means um, we're saying that it works for every industry or every material, um, but um, we did find a lot of remanufacturers throughout the country that are working beyond automotive. So we spoke to um, companies as well like Desso that are working on carpet flooring, various different electronics, um, some, some ideas around textiles, paints, chemicals, furniture. So, so there's really a lot more out there than maybe is at the moment uh, considered and we really thought that that's something that um, should need to be looked at a bit further. Um, so I guess in terms of just to keep it brief, um, the discussion today where we're really trying to look at uh, how we manufacture sit within the more traditional waste companies, we thought the, or our research kind of suggests that a lot of the um, traditional waste companies have such an expertise on logistics and moving around products and getting the products back to both manufacturers and third party manufacturers that we really see the key role of the traditional waste industry in that returning the products and, and um, making sure that they don't end up being recycled if they could be remanufactured or end up being incinerated or um, in landfill if there's much more value to them.